Let's do it. All right. Welcome, everybody, to Thursday Night Shift, February 11th. Our opening question tonight is, um, and I may have to hop off early, just FYI. I have a party that starts right after this. So if y'all see me disappear, that's why. Um, opening question to our SSD panel. Have you personally sponsored someone in a different region? Um, and just tell me how you did it. And if not, why have you not done it, right? Um, and I'll just kick it off because my answer is really quick. I have not personally sponsored someone because I didn't feel like um, I knew all the information and comfortable enough to bring them on to personally sponsor. And then JP, go ahead. Yes. Um, I have, but I think I didn't, um, that's a long story. I don't, I haven't done it again. I hadn't even tried hard enough to do it because I haven't felt like I've had the right knowledge. Didn't think I could do it. Just felt like there was a whole lot of information, basically the same reason of uh, Callie. Sorry, my mouse wasn't using to my, moving to my mute button for some reason. Um, okay, so I know, I mean, we have people within other countries, but personally, the answer would be no. And honestly, the reason is it's not, this is so bad. It's not because, I mean, I don't feel like I 100% know the information that wouldn't stop me, not saying that it stopped these other ladies, but it's also that I haven't personally put the focus there or done what I know I need to do to make that happen, which after tonight, I'm hoping to change that. Oh, uh, Jay, uh, Jen. So I have personally sponsored, um, and I'm going to get into a little more detail a little bit later in the car, but I will car, car, call. <laughs> I, uh, my very first um, personally sponsored person was from a Facebook post where it was your typical, does anybody know anyone in Australia? Oh, uh, Melissa. I have personally sponsored someone in another region. She was a friend of mine from childhood and she has continued to watch my posting on Facebook and on social. And um, I had asked her before, she had told me no, not right now. And then in the past six months, she finally did it. And I didn't feel like I knew anything or that I was gonna be able to help. And I don't even speak the language. Luckily she speaks English uh, because she, um, <clears throat> luckily she speaks English, but I was able to connect her with proper resources. So <clears throat> I will leave it at that because I think we're gonna get into that. But um, uh, Jody. Well, thank you, Miss Melissa. All right, my answer quick and easy. I have not, and I am here tonight to learn a lot. And my answers are very similar to other people. I think I, you know, I tried to reach out. I didn't, couldn't find anybody. I didn't necessarily have all the confidence because of the lack of knowledge and things like that. Um, so I'm very excited to dig into this conversation tonight. So um, Miss Jill, are you ready? Yep. Um, <clears throat> yes, I have. Uh, Canada and Australia um, it, uh, didn't expand like I'd hoped, but the way I did it similar to Jen was um, social media um, and asking my VIPs for referrals. So just the basics, but I hasn't expanded from that because I honestly haven't tried as hard as I should be, so. Um, I have to take back my answer because I don't consider Canada international and they are. So yes, my answer is I guess. <laughs> Canada is still our region though, so okay. outside of our region. And, and because in New York, Canada's like right yeah. here and in Detroit, yeah. right here. So I never fully, I always forget that Canada is a different country. Yeah. It's, so so it's still our region, but there's still, a, there's, still a, there's still a learning curve there. Oh Lord, yes. But let me tell you, I do want to say this though, because when Canada first opened back in 09, mm -hmm. I got a request from somebody. I didn't necessarily know anybody there. They found me online and said, you know, would you be my sponsor? So there, I changed my answer. The end. <laughs> Jen, are you up? Yep, it's going to be Jen. She's going to ask all of you a question. Oh, now. sorry. 
sorry, sorry. So um, I, yes, I, I'm asking uh, you guys the question. Okay. Right? Or am I asking the whole Just group in as general, a whole? Everybody. Okay, in general. Group. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I get thrown off easily, obviously. So my question to each and every one of you would be, and please drop your answers in the chat because I'm really interested in seeing what you write. Where is like, if you got to pick, and it's not allowed to be in the United States, if you got to pick somewhere that you got to go on your dream vacation, and obviously there's no COVID and you just get to go anywhere in the whole world, where would you want to go? So tell us in the chat. I would love, love, love. I love it. Maldives, Germany, Greece, Bahamas, Spain, Italy. So Australia, Ireland, I love it. And guys, here's the exciting thing. Most of the places that you're all listing right now are places that you could go to if you sponsor someone in that country and it's a business expense. So I, along with I drug Miss Callie along with me and her mama Becca, we hopped on an airplane one year and we flew all the way to Australia. And then when we got to Australia, we didn't realize it was another six hour flight to get to New Zealand when we were completely exhausted. So just so you know, in case you ever do that, once you get to Australia, you're not almost there. You still have another six hour flight. But anyway, so we went all the way there to hang out with my brand new recruit who I had just sponsored in Australia from that Facebook post. And so we had the most fun. We got to go on our dream vacation, a place that we'd always wanted to go because you know, the truth is if this girl had joined from like the Northern tip of Canada, we might not have been as excited. Not that there's anything wrong with the Northern tip of Canada, but I live in Maine and I don't like snow and I've had enough of it. So I wanted to go to Australia. So anyway, my point is if you sponsor somebody in another region where Sensi is located, then it's a business trip. It is a total write-off. It is a tax break, everything. You are there for business purposes. And it's amazing. So I'm super excited, like I said, to see all of you who are hoping to, because after tonight, uh, this is what I want you to do. Those of you who chose Spain, Ireland, Australia, Italy, we can't sell in Italy. I mean, we can't sponsor in Italy, but we can sell in Italy. So you go to the country right next door, like you could go to France or you could go to anywhere around Italy and you, you get a recruit there, you go visit them and then you um, get them to sell in Italy. Anyway, you get it. You can still go to Italy on a business trip, no problem. So for those of you who like to travel, and I like to talk about travel a lot because it's one of my favorite things in the whole world. And happy birthday, is it Dedra? Everybody's saying happy birthday to her. So happy birthday to you. Um, so anyway, one of my favorite things is to travel. So if you can build an international team, you can be an international traveler. How cool is that? So um, I think, Heather, are you? You yeah, so um, we're going to just have everybody share really quick. So we do have international people in our downline. So I reached out like to my one of my directors, um, Amy, and asked her, hey, I see that you still have two girls in Australia in our group. How did you meet them? I think the burning question that everybody either says is, I don't know anybody in other countries. It's not necessarily about who you know, but someone you know knows somebody, knows somebody, knows somebody, right? And so we wanted to go through and share. We all reached out to our team members and we asked them, how did you meet these people? And so I'm gonna read directly what Amy said. Um, she said, oh, let me go back because my hostess is telling me that I put the wrong time for our party and I have to go change that real quick. Um, it totally happens. So she said uh, years ago, um, half of her team was actually international. And she sponsored two when Australia launched that she had met in mom's groups on social media. We had started chatting about things we had in common and it progressed that way. And then the rest of those girls just came from them sponsoring and the girls that she sponsored, this other girl, and sponsored all these other people. And it just started growing from there, fizzled back a little bit, but now it's, it's going to start growing again because that's where we're putting our attention back to. So that's, that's where my girl met her two current people. Who wants to go next? I will, except for I did not ask the question, but I will give a tip of how I know other people have done it without asking. Um, so Colette Gunnell, I went to one of her trainings once. She's one of the founders of Sensi. And she um, said that the way that she had found a lot of people that were international within her group 
was anytime she had an open house or a party or anything at all at the bottom of the flyer the invitation the announcement she simply said if you uh, if you know of anybody in these countries i welcome referrals that simple so you're just by happenstance right they're already coming to a party you're already having conversations you're already if it's an open house if you do those um you can just simply ask and i bet most people will tell you if they didn't know him that's how they found him was that referral from someone else um i'll share a quick story i actually have two stories one um i was trying to sponsor somebody in australia when it first opened i did know had a friend who had family there it didn't it didn't pan out but because i was very afraid of the lack of knowledge that i had about sponsoring in other countries i reached out to somebody um, who is a superstar director up in canada who sponsors a ton internationally and i won't say her name because i didn't ask for permission to use any of her story but what she and her husband had done was basically made a list and called people on their list that they knew and said hey do you know anybody that lives in Australia, we're getting ready to launch over there. Basic, I don't know their exact words, but they were able to build a very large and successful international downline by doing that. So you don't necessarily have to know anybody in another country. Um, my Canadian team that I just remembered is international. This is so funny to me. Just cracks me up my silliness. Um, the person who joined underneath me, she's no longer here, but I have an enormous group in Canada. So it didn't matter that I didn't sponsor most of these people here. The, the few that I did sponsor led to all these other people. And that's how downlines and groups and organizations start to build. It just takes one or two people to lead you to all these other amazing people, which lead you to more amazing people. And it just becomes a giant snowball effect. So um, I am definitely taking notes on tonight's call because I need to get better, more focused and more confident in this area. Um, and one of them is going to have to be to start asking people that I do know um, in my VIP page, do you know people in these other countries? Because I'm not doing that. And so by not doing that, I'm obviously not going to build the team. If I'm not asking, I don't know anybody there. There's no other way to get it though, get to those people. So um, those are my two little tips on that. I'll, I'll chime in. Um, I mentioned earlier that I did, I did have someone in Australia Australia, I can't talk. Um, and it was sort of a simple Facebook post like Jen mentioned. It was like, I don't even remember. It was something super quick, simple. And I think it was like, we had just barely announced it maybe. And so I can remember her asking me all that she found, I don't even know how she found me. Like I did not know her prior at all. And I think it was on like my business page, you know, something that I don't think I'm super active enough on anyway. Um, Life circumstances and things didn't work out. However, um, I think we still communicate. And after this, I'm going to reach out to her again where I can go back with a little more confidence and courage to rebuild that connection with her. Um, and I do have a lot of Canadians as well. Um, however, I did not personally recruit any of them, but like Jody said, they, they have rolled up to me. So um, I don't think I have anyone else in any other regions or anything other than that. So I just wanted to share my example that, um, that I had experienced. Can I add to that again? So something again, that I think was really important that we, we just hammer on it and all things sponsoring, whether it's international or your neighbor next door, it really does just take a couple of people and we're all rereading or reading for the first time beach money again. And it's talked about a lot in that book. Um, I can tell you that I have a large group um, and a very, very large international group, none of which I sponsored, okay? But there's still people I get paid on. Um, I think you guys are gonna go into the agreements later, so I won't get into that. But again, I'm still earning royalties off of people I didn't sponsor. So uh, it doesn't necessarily mean just you have to sponsor. It's teaching your team, letting them know that this is an opportunity because you may not get one, but your team might get one. And if that person leaves and they roll up, the power is there, you guys, that you just got to get the momentum going. So that's another thing I wanted to just mention. I can go. So um, I posted on Facebook one day, does anybody know anyone who lives in Australia? Simple, just like Jamie said, very easy, simple post. A girl that I went to high school with said, I do. And her 
um, cousin, it was her cousin, her cousin ended up joining. And because of her cousin that joined, her cousin was 18 years old, by the way, she was young. And uh, to be perfectly honest, she wasn't quite ready for a business. But what I did that made a difference was I worked my butt off with her on sponsoring people. So she, she thought that Sensi meant sponsor people because honestly, those of you who, I mean, I kind of feel like those of you who are on this call, you are looking to build businesses, right? So we all know that in order to grow a successful business, you have to continuously bring new people onto your team. So you have a bucket, there are tiny little holes in the bottom of that bucket and water. If you fill the bucket with water, slowly, you're going to have a little leak, but your bucket can stay full as long as you keep adding more water to the bucket, right? So we spent a lot of time on recruiting, on sponsoring, and I, you know, me hoping that she would continue with it and then it would be life-changing for her and she was so lucky because she was only 18 years old and she was going to have this amazing business well she didn't end up staying with it but i now have five frontline that have stuck with sensi and have rolled up to me because of her and i'll still reach out to her sometimes and thank her and just see how she's doing because she's the cutest thing ever callie got to meet her she's adorable um and then so i have a in, I have a couple of other like Canada and Germany. I have some, I have frontline from home parties. So I was at home parties and I always mentioned the international opportunity. So, I mean, does it happen a lot? Is, is it often that somebody says, yeah, I have a cousin in Germany and I'm sure she'll sell Sensi. No, but I never forget to offer it. And that's why I have frontline in those countries. And then I have a few in New Zealand frontline because I was at a, an event in the state of Maine. I was doing a Sensi event and the woman next to me was a vendor and um, it was a terrible event. We really, not much happened. We didn't get, it was just a bad day. The weather wasn't good, blah, blah, blah. But we got to talk a lot and come to find out she had a connection to New Zealand. And um, so thanks to her, I have a great team. Like I, one of my girls, one of my frontline in New Zealand, because of this woman that I did an event with, she has a team of 38 right now. So that's pretty cool. I mean, she's actually worked really hard on building her team. So point being, um, tell people, you're, everyone needs to know that you have an international business because I can promise you somebody you know knows somebody in either Europe, Australia, New Zealand, probably all of them. Because of Facebook now, we're all so much more connected than we ever were because of all social media, really. And But I feel like Facebook is great because whatever, it doesn't matter. But it, it, we're connected internationally. It's so much easier now. And we're going to get into more details later. But you don't need to know a thing. You just need to be able to get them interested and help them to see the opportunity. And you're golden because honestly, it's easier to help a team member who is from another another country because Sensi totally has your back. They are all over helping them. So Love it. Um, who's next? I don't know. Does Melissa or, or Jill, do y'all want to add any anything to how did your team members meet them? Or do you know where the root came from the story of how they met them? Well, and I want to jump in really quick and say, too, that a lot of times we hear some of the things that have worked for some of us. And I will tell you that I've posted many times trying to see if anybody knows anybody in another country or if they have anybody that they know. And a lot of times that falls on deaf ears. And so don't think that just because we say like, oh, do this and it works, do this and it works. Like I haven't had success with that. However, I did have a postcard that said that I put in every single order that says, did you know Sensi is global? And here are the countries that ha have the business opportunity and have Sensi. And that I did get something from. And so, you know, you never know where it may come from, but you have to keep your mind open to the fact that we're not just in the United States. Um, and I think we all have these kind of anecdotal, you know, I knew somebody when I was little, or I posted in a mom group on Facebook somewhere, or I posted in my newsfeed and somebody saw it and passed me to their friend. The, the bottom line, I think the moral of all of this is it's because an effort was put somewhere. And so if you say nothing, do nothing, you will get nothing unless it's a completely fluky random thing. But a lot of times internationally that doesn't happen because somebody can't join on your website if you don't have that agreement signed. If you don't have, if you're not available for somebody to join your team in all regions, then it's probably not going to happen that out of luck, 
somebody joins. So you have to put effort somewhere and keep in the front of your mind that we are global and put those efforts in, and put it out there. You never know. Love it. And I think that's a really um, great question. So we're going to move to kind of a panel thing where we're almost interviewing them now. So um, any of the superstar directors, including Terry Newman, I see Terry Newman on here. And so you feel free to chime in also, because um, I think it's going to be a great way to give you guys some information from everybody's perspective. So I'm going to just go off of what Melissa said, because it's very true. You can't sponsor until then. So what do I have to do as far as on my end as a consultant to be able to sponsor in other regions? Does someone want to take that real quick? Or Melissa, you want to finish that part up? Yeah, so there are, you have to sign a, an agreement, a cross-border agreement that is under your accounts tab, even if you just want to peruse and see, um, you know, what we're talking about. It's in your accounts tab on your workstation, but you can subscribe to other regions and then you have to have that region of, you have to have signed the cross-border agreement to have those regions available on your PWS. So on my PWS, I because I subscribe to all regions, um, anybody can go to my PWS, change the US flag to whatever the flag of their country is, where we have Sensi, and they can look at my website. They can't buy from me, but they can join my team. And so, um, but you can't have that unless you have signed the red and signed the cross-border agreements. And then they vary in price. I believe it's five dollars um, for each region. Well, for each, not just region, five dollars per country. And Jen, am I? Am I? You're smirking. So, am I giving the right information? Well, Kelly. I have. I actually. So J J Lola, J names are hard. I actually have this up. So I'm just going to pull this up. I'll screen share Thank it. You. you can look at it. Um, this is a document in your workstation, and it is called International Agreement overview um, and it has the different charts by country so they do slightly range but there they are perfect so almost i don't know if you're going to continue i apologize i didn't mean to fully interrupt and is jamie oh, no that's fine and that's can you just say what that document is so that or just show that yep it's international agreements overview and um, there's also one that's called the cross-border sponsoring process. Yes. And I can put them in the chat too. I had printed them off in case we need a reference because it is kind of a lot of information. I'm not going to lie. And Jamie, I know you had this pulled up to share. Do you want to just really quickly tell them what countries are in each region? Hold. I did have that pulled up, Heather. Oh, while Jamie's pulling that up, can I can I address something that was just in the chat? Yeah. So somebody just, and I'll, that'll give Jamie a minute to find what she has to find. So Vicki just mentioned that she knows some people in Australia. And I just wanted to, to touch on that because, you know, here's what works for me. And this is just an idea for you guys. Anytime I know somebody say in an, honestly, anytime I talk to anybody about joining, I never put the person on the spot. So if I knew somebody who lived in Australia, I would be contacting them and I wouldn't say, I would not say, hey, we have a really great business opportunity. You should tell Sensi, you would be so good at this and blah, 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 blah. I would say, hey, it's so nice. You know, I would build a relationship first. First. We wouldn't talk about Sensi. And then I would say, I'm looking to expand my business in Australia. And I'm just wondering if you know of anyone who might be interested in a really <laughs> great opportunity. And I let them decide whether or not it's them. So like I said, don't always put the pressure on people because then they feel like you're kind of attacking them. But if you give them, you say, you know, I, I have um, referral bonuses or however you want to say it for anybody that you send my way, and then maybe it will be them. Okay, I think I finally found it, sorry. Thank you, Jen, oh, for filling thanks. in. Um, so region one is the United States, it's territories, Canada and Mexico. Is this what you asked me to share? Am I sharing the right thing? Because I think it, a lot of times, I don't even know all the countries. Oh, right. yes, that's why I have to struggle. I had to look it up. Yeah, so um, just, you can just tell them. Okay, so region yeah. one is United States and its territories, Canada and Mexico. Region two, United Kingdom, Germany, Ireland, Austria, 
France, Spain, and Netherlands. And then region three is Australia and New Zealand. And I was just gonna like add on to that, that yesterday I actually went and re, um, redid my agreements because I had unsubscribed for a little while with the, probably the wrong attitude. So I'm subscribed now, I'm ready to do this. I'm not gonna be afraid. So I just did it again yesterday so that I wouldn't miss out on any opportunities. And Jen informed me yesterday, it was quite the educational thing for me when we were coming up with this training is when she references region two, she just says, she just says Europe because people it's so close. And so people know people in different countries over there. So just reference Europe. Um, don't worry and think you have to know it all. And like Melissa said earlier, you can sell and sponsor in your own region. So those of you who are in region one, you can sell in the United States and its territories, Canada and Mexico by changing the flag, like Melissa said, you sponsor in other regions. You can't sell, except Italy, you can only sponsor. Does that make sense for that part? Um, okay, and feel free to only put your sell, questions. You I'm no. sorry, what? Except in Italy, you can only sell, not sponsor. Oh, right. sorry, yeah, only sell, now, not sponsor. And, and something I'll add just there really quickly because um, I had this happen to us, even though I thought I'd done it, but whatever. Um, it's important, to, if, especially if you're building a team and a group, or if you are a leader with a larger group, to be paying attention when you see your group numbers change or your team members change. Because if you have some, the team member, like let's say you guys are inspired here tonight and you go and um, you start sponsoring, if your upline doesn't pay attention to that, if they have not signed the cross-border agreement, they will not earn any commission or bonuses as a leader on those. So it's really important, especially if you're sharing with your teams to let them know that, um, or if you're sharing this training or whatever, I hope you're getting what I'm grasping here. English is hard tonight. Um, that everybody that's involved in that as an upline that may possibly have the option of earning commissions or bonuses on that, they have to sign those agreements or they will not get paid. And I lost several hundred dollars a month on the Netherlands because I thought I'd signed it and it didn't go all the way through. So that was like six months and they don't go back on that. So just keep that in mind. That's a huge one actually. Um, and then really quick, I just want to touch base on if you're in this case or this situation, if your spouse is active duty military, um, you living on or having an APO FPO address is still a United States um, address in a foreign country. So um, make sure that you do research the APO, FPO, DPO, FAQ document in your workstation. That is there. Um, and I won't go into it too much unless y'all have specific um, questions about it, but you, I'll just read the first part. Um, an FPO, APO, DPO address is U.S. military station uh, within in an installation in a foreign country. They are allowed to receive their mail at a subsidized rate through the United States Postal Service, but the USPS processes this mail and to the military postal system for final delivery to their post or their APO, the FPO, whatever. But the, the reason why you can't, as an independent consultant, you cannot have cash and carry products shipped to you that will be sold at a party, a fair, or a show. Um, it's, you're basically, it's an improper use of the military postal system um, and defrauds taxpayers. And there's a whole bunch of legal things of why, but it's basically in a nutshell, it's direct shipping to the customer, right? They're ordering goods, it's going straight to their house, that's legal, right? If you don't know what FPO, APO um, is done, you search APO on, a, on our workstation and here's all the deliverable zip codes that we can ship to. So if you're unsure, maybe you have a customer that's stationed and they wanna order something, um, it's still a United States, so you can, you can have them order and ship to all of these deliverable APO, FPOs. Um, how, how do you find out how much the starter kit is for each country? Like, let's say y'all didn't know, and maybe you start talking to people and you're like, uh, how do, how do I find that out? How would you know the answer to that? The easiest way to find it. Probably changing the flag on your workstation or website. You could change your flag, but only if you're subscribed, right? And you're enrolled, right? Will you see it? What's another way you could see it? Yeah. I know. <laughs> okay. So, so you can Google 
And I actually, we did this yesterday. You just Google. So Google's, if you want to know in New Zealand, Google Sensi New Zealand and just look for somebody's website who's in New Zealand. Go, this is just like a super easy way to do it. I'm sure there's a much better, it's, I'm sure it's in our workstation somewhere, but for me, this is way easier. Click on their website, click join, and it'll pull up the kit. You can snap a picture of it and it'll tell you exactly how much it costs. So it's different, just so you guys know, there are different prices in New Zealand and Australia. I think it's like one, what would they say? 150, 149 in Australia and 169 in New Zealand is the cost and their amount and their dollars. Same with Canada, Google Sensi Canada, pull up a website that ends in, so if, in case you guys don't know, you know how our websites end in US, Canada's websites end in, <clears throat> in CA, Netherlands ends in NL, like it goes on like that. And then, so you just look for one that ends in the right letters and then you know how much it is. So my next question would be, if, if all of these people are thinking, I don't know anybody, what would y'all's best advice be? How do they reach out to find people that they know right now? That's probably the number one question that everybody's asking. Well, where do I start? Tell me what to do. I mean, like we said, post on Facebook, ask who you know, or Melissa said that may not work. It may not be a magic question asked, but what else would y'all suggest right now? Well, kind of what I said using Colette's idea at the beginning, right, is just on make it a habit to have that as something like Melissa said, she drops the card in all of her bags, right? If you just make it a habit, it'll catch somebody's attention at some point. But it is one of those things where, you know, it is you're hoping that it catches their attention. But it's not an actual sure thing call to action moment. So Kimmy Hunterman says a great one, like join groups on social media. What are your interests? Like Jody that loves dogs, or maybe it's dogs of UK or dogs of Australia, or it's still a love, right? It's still a passion. You're not going in there leading, like Jen said, like the crazy Cincy lady soliciting. You're starting a natural organic relationship, but you're not going to meet strangers unless you put yourself in positions to meet them under really organic circumstances. So many of us are using um, Google Forms now for order forms instead of using a regular order form for those of you who aren't, or you could you could take this idea and change it a little bit based on how you have people check out. But if you're using an order form on Google, you could have a question on there that says, um, did you know that Sensi is in other countries and I am looking to grow, or I'm looking to train or I'm however you want to word it so that it fits you. And then just check any, any countries that you may have a friend or a loved one in that I would, I, you would be willing to give me their information, whatever. I haven't thought about this, but, um, obviously word it better than that. And then just give them a box to check. And then what if somebody checks Australia, then you just contact them and say, oh, so tell me about whoever you know in Australia. And then of course you're also offering, if you can, if you have some old Sensi product laying around or make them a batch of cookies and say, thank you so much for that referral and give them a batch of cookies, whatever works for you. So let's say somebody does provide a name. What is your next step? Like, I know you said you, you wanna reach out to them and have that person introduce you can you kind of walk through that process Jen where it's not awkward number one and number two I love what you said yesterday by quit looking for all the data and the information that's not going to absolutely help them just get a warmer and wax under their hands and how would you go about doing that if you have a contact can you just kind of run through that scenario yes so that is actually the most important piece of this entire call is you guys don't need to know anything you just need to know what countries we're in and you need to have signed the agreement so that people can join under you the rest will come come to us go to your superstar director they will help you happily help you figure it out it's not hard you guys it doesn't take rocket science by any means it's actually quite easy as a matter of fact the other countries are so much more simplified than we are because they're newer in their businesses so so um, what I personally do is when I talk to somebody who may have a, a, a person, a um, contact for me in another country, I always do it by voice message, voice text or whatever. I never write it all out. I always record my voice because I don't want that. They're never going to read the whole paragraph that I'm going to send them with all the details. So I send them a voice message and I just say, hey, you know, I, you know, I'm super excited that you may know of somebody who's in Australia and I would love the opportunity to work with them and help them whether they'd like to build a big business or a little business, totally and completely up to them. 
would you mind connecting us? And whether you can do it, just have us, the three of us in a group together, but maybe just validate me a little bit. Let them know that I'm not some random spam person that you met on the internet. Let them know why we're friends or something like that. You can even tell them that privately. So like I said, I do this all via voice because they're never going to read it all. And then we just take it from there. And honestly, that's how every single time, every time I've gotten a referral from someone who's joined me, not even in just in other countries, but even in the United States, that's how the ball always gets rolling. Super easy. And then how do you get a warmer again, in their hand? Like how do you, how do you get them oh, product yes. to try? So if it's in another country, the first thing I would do is go right to my workstation and see if I have anybody on my team that lives in that country. And if I do, I go onto their website. If they have a PWS, if not, I say to them, hey, you need to go turn your PWS on because I'm going to place an order on your website and have it sent to someone. And of course, before I do that, I make an agreement with them. I say, I'm going to send something to a contact that I have. The only thing I'm going to ask from you is you get to keep the commission, you get to keep all of that, but I just want you to respect the fact that this is somebody that I'm talking to. So are you okay with that? And they, and they say yes. If I don't have anybody in my team or in my group, then I find a friend. I would go to one of my like superstar director friends and say, hey, does anybody have a contact that lives in whatever country? And same thing. So I go to that person and I say, I would like to mail some product to uh, somebody that is interested in Sensi, that is interested in joining my team possibly. All I would ask is if I can place the order on your website that you please not contact them about joining. So it's that simple because you can send it. We used to have seed kits, they were called, where we could mail them from, you know, honestly, they were way more expensive than doing it this way. So and when you shop on somebody else's website, of course, you need their international address, obviously, but it, you put in your credit card and it'll come up, it'll, it'll charge you there. It, I don't have to explain that. Never mind, because I can't even put it into words, but you know what I mean. It'll charge the right amount. It'll charge you American money. <laughs> okay. Your, your credit card will do the exchange for you. Thank you. <laughs> exchange fee. So if you have multiple credit cards, you could look into that, but that's a whole different, yes, right. but just, yeah. yeah. And it works. People love it. Like, and you know what, honestly, if you mailed something to, uh, you know, uh, if they are just so thankful. And usually if you take the time and you send them something, they are interested. And then I'll also mail them stuff right from my house. I'll mail them, you know, a little, what I would consider a join packet. Unless, you know, I was feeling like my budget was tight. I would just mail them. I would email them information is what I was trying to say. Yeah. And Kimmy has a great question. She says, if you're ordering it from a team member, will that count as bonus buying because you're using your card? Um, in this case, we don't, we used to have seed kits back in the day and we just confirmed that they stopped doing the seed kits in 2019. So what I always do, um, and I still got audited this past one since he called me at 10:30 uh, PM to verify my card being used on a downline. Anytime that happens, I keep very good records, the name of the person where I met them, how many times I contacted, I call Cincy and notify them or by email. My card was used during this transaction for this because a seed kit was not available and it's a potential recruit that I was trying to sponsor and I ordered it from this consultant's website on this day at this time. I mean, like you are a court reporter reporting. They're still going to audit it, but if it is a fair and square legit, they will know this. So that's how I handled those types of situations. Hey, Heather, can I jump in really quick too Please. and just say this is unrelated to international, but related to what Heather just said. If there is ever a situation where you have to use your credit card on another consultant's website, best practice is to call customer service and let them know what you're doing so they can document your account because it does then alleviate if there is ever an audit. Um, so if you ever have, you know, you collect money and whatever the case is, your credit card's going on any other consultant's website, good practice is to go ahead and call and let them know. Yeah, it's very true. And they'll still audit. Like they were still calling me verifying it, but you cannot, not, not, no exceptions, use it for anybody's starter kit. That's the only rule. You do that, you're busted going to jail forever. Or maybe not jail, but y'all know what I mean. Just kidding. But you can't do it. Yeah, never for a starter kit. Um, okay, what are some other questions coming in? I want to make sure we've covered... Um, Yes, the flag, yes. Did we talk about official Facebook groups? Sorry if I missed No, that. yeah, will you cover that? That's a great one actually. Um, just, and not well, needing to know. Okay, well, just like I said, uh, I felt like I didn't know where to go or what to do and that probably didn't educate my person so well. 
I probably should have sought out more things. Well, guess what? Like Jen said, I think, or maybe I'm thinking about our conversation yesterday, but they have these great Facebook Cincy, okay, Cincy Facebook approved, I can't think of the words, official um, uh, for other regions. So I'm actually in some of the other official pages with Cincy so that I can, I, I will be honest, I haven't checked in there in a while. So I'm, I'm super motivated to get more knowledge and go there and learn um, to, so don't feel like you're going to like sign someone up and then like, okay, peace out. Like you have somewhere to go to find the correct information. Other people who are directly in their region that you can kind of connect them with as well. So don't forget about those. Make sure it's the official ones from Cincy so that you're like in contact with the right people getting the correct information. But that is an absolute wonderful tool to and a group to be a part of for um, making sure you get the right information. I'm still here, guys. I just have my camera off because my kids cannot stay out of my office as adults during one hour of work. So I apologize for that. Um, so Renee just asked if they end up sponsor if you end up sponsoring somebody internationally, how do they get their kit if they can't buy from us? Well, they're not buying the kit from us. They're enrolling as their own consultant in their country. They can't enroll underneath you and you be their sponsor if you're not um, signed to those cross-border agreements for that country. But they're not purchasing a kit from you. They're, they're purchasing a starter kit under their own account. So they're not buying it. And again, can I make the point one more time, like beating a dead horse? Don't let all these little details worry you. Who cares about, like, honestly, I mean, I know you care, but just go find people. Don't worry about what you do, where they go, and how much it costs, and this and that, and the other thing. Just go find people and then worry about it. That well, makes sense. You, oh, go ahead. No, I'm so sorry to interrupt. No, go Yesterday, ahead. when we were kind of prepping and talking about this, I got, I, I got really motivated. Y'all heard me say I went and signed all my agreements, and... So my husband lived in Mexico for two years. He is completely fluent in the language. I'm literally sitting on a huge opportunity with like him having that language um, or and the contacts. He lived in several areas. And so I immediately texted him and was like, okay, we need 10 contacts and we need to know how to make connections with them. You know, I mean, I'm just basically not taking advantage of taking advantage of him. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, so <laughs> sorry, but I mean, it's seriously, just like Jen said, don't overthink all the little details, just move forward. Just like do it because why haven't I done that before? Why hadn't I ever said, get, let's get 10 names and let's move forward with that. The rest will fall into place. You'll find the right outlets. You'll find the right pages. There's a plethora of people right here like we've just learned so much. I've learned so much in the past two days. Um, I'm still waiting on that list for me, but it's there and we're going to do it. And it's, I'm seriously motivated by so much by all of this little things, because I think the little things have held me back and now I'm not going to let it hold me back anymore. So I just wanted to share that. Well, and I think it's one of the things that Jen said yesterday to me that really was an aha moment for me was um, just get a warmer and wax under their nose, let them fall in love with the product because really ultimately that's what's going to have them going. They'll join. You put them in these official groups. And what is the best thing that we have over any other company? It's our Sensi Spirit. These Sensi official pages, they are taken care of by A, the official employees of Sensi for that region, and two, Sensi Spirit pulling together and sisterhood and brotherhood helping each other. You don't have to learn and duplicate everything for this region now that you have a recruit. You get them in the hands that they are the professionals and they will take it and carry it away. They will get connected just like you're doing right here on Thursday night shift. They're gonna get connected, inspired and motivated in their own region and take off like a wildfire. And pretty soon that one person is gonna turn into 38 people all because you put a wax and warmer in their hands to try. And I just thought of another story that I totally forgot about. So I had a leader once who had a connection. So 
her, she had a connection to somebody who was Spanish speaking and she called me and she's like, this person is going to be so good. And like, she, I think she really wants to do this, I think. And, but the problem is I don't speak Spanish and she doesn't speak English. So we called customer support and there was a, a guy who used to work for Sensi. His name was Mark Malo, whatever his name was. He did the, he like, basically sponsored her for us because he spoke Spanish. He answered every question that she had. She joined, we put her in a Spanish speaking Facebook group and we crossed our fingers and she did great because we didn't speak Spanish. So, I mean, it's really that simple. And Sensi, call customer service. If you have any questions, call them. They will help you. They will find the answer for you. I have a question that I didn't want to type out. Um, I jumped on here late, so I don't know if you guys already covered this, but whenever you do get a connection with somebody in another country, where do you go from there? Because I feel like, I don't know if I say, I'm looking to expand my business, or do you know, even know what Sensi is? Or, you know, uh, yeah, I just, I don't know where to go from there. And I feel like that's where I get like word vomit and I say way too much. So where, where do you, start with like how did this person put you in contact or yeah that's I guess that's my question <laughs> so I would say start with voice text remember because like I said especially when we have so much to say and we're so excited then it's hard to like write it all out and they're like what is she even writing I'm not going to read all of this so and I also think that um there's like, a, there's a, a generational, I think it's, I really do think that like, I might say something different than you might say it, Kimmy, or you know what I mean? Based on our ages, like I might say, I'm looking to expand my business. I don't know. I'm not even sure why I'm saying that, but I think somebody else should answer. Cause I don't have a great idea. I'll have to think about this and I'll have to chat with you tomorrow about that. Well, I think even the way people say words, like what, when we, our language in, in, in America is totally different of other cultures. So you want to even just be carry carry careful of language barriers or meanings of different words. Um, and I would, like Jen said, find the person and say, I would be so happy and excited if you could connect me to that person in a group message. And if something comes out of it and it's not reaching out necessarily to that person, it's, do you know anyone, right? They're letting them decide that it's for themselves but letting that person know that the connector, hey, I'm going to reward you with a real, some really nice product. I really appreciate you doing this, but it's not, it's not about you. It's about them. And you have to remember that. I know for me personally, if I was, if I had a referral, right, for another country, I would, I would treat it very similarly to if I had a referral here in the United States, right? The only thing I would say differently is I am so excited because we, I've seen what Sensi has done here in the United States for me, and I know what's possible for you guys over there, and it's still so new. And so I am just, you know, you, you were referred to me by so-and-so um, as somebody that they knew there. And so I would love to just send you maybe even some samples or a catalog or something, just so that you can see and experience what I'm kind of talking about, right? I wouldn't probably go to the point of full products. And if that's something that you feel like yourself or somebody that you know is interested in, um, if you want to shoot me over your address or your email or whatever, whatever is in your budget personally to do, right. Then, um, I would just go about it that route because I feel like, I don't feel like I know that Sensi is such a, is a, is something that we need to experience. Right. And is the, we say all the time, the smell and does the sell in. So you could look at your catalog and then you could pull up the one for the other country and you could look at it and say, okay, I maybe have some stickers that match, or I have a few sample slivers that match from country to country. And I would just keep those as flat and as light as physically possible. And I would send it that way to, um, to them to actually get fragrance there. And then you could go further with ordering from somebody um, as like a seed kit type thing but it's really how simple I would go I would just keep it as simple as possible and try and get some fragrance fragrances in their hands and I'm going to say one last thing and then I'm going to hang up so I can get ready for this party but um I, I can't I don't know if we can share the numbers with you but they're it's booming in in the other two regions regions two and region three right now are exploding right because they came after United States launched and all that so they're really, I mean, you think we're in a hyper growth, they're like an extreme, extreme, extreme hyper growth. So if there's any piece of advice that I would tell you is find out who you know, and who your people know, start those conversations, get those postcards in the bag, make sure people know who you're looking for. Because if it's blowing up right now, now is your time to do it before it plateaus again, right? 
it's all up and down, right? So it's just your choice to jump on this now, because if you're not, somebody else will. And I'd rather have them on your team. Thank you for saying that because I kept unmuting and then remuting and unmuting and remuting because I knew there was something I wanted to say and that was it, but I couldn't remember what it was, is that they have shared like the, we, you know, here in region one and how we've been doing very, very well. Um, but, and as a company, they've shared how last year we just killed it. Right. And those other regions are like doubling and tripling even where we're at. So definitely something you want to focus on. I wanted to also go back. I was typing it, but the, um, for instance, when we talk about the language differences, for instance, don't always jump to conclusions either way. Uh, in Ireland, for example, crack, like let's go do some crack or let's go have some crack actually means fun. So, you know, that's another example is here you'd be like, oh, wait, I don't do that. I don't roll that way. Right. But it's something to just be very aware of, of those differences in situations. <laughs> what country says crack? Ireland. Ireland. That's fun. Mm -hmm. Crack is I didn't fun. hear that in my Peaky Blinders. <laughs> um, there was a couple of questions and I really, this, I don't really know the answer or I'm questioning myself, but Liz asked about um, the sponsoring in Canada. Somebody wants to have a party and can she flip it? She just has to change her flag to Canadian, correct? And then they can do an online party and she'd still be able to flip that hostess just as normal, correct? Okay. That is, yes. So because like you said, Canada is still our region, region as long as you've right. signed, that is still a cross border agreement mm -hmm. because it is across the border, then you'd be able to do that. And so someone else asked a, a question, but it came to me directly instead of to everyone. So I'm going to just read it out. And then if you guys want to help me answer it, that'd be great. She says she has someone that buys from her. And she lives in El Paso. The other lady lives in Juarez, she doesn't want to join. Do you have any suggestions on what she could say to convince her? It's so hard to get products to her. And I know Mexico has its own set of internal issues. So I don't, but I don't know enough about it to speak to that. I would I just ask her then if she knows anybody that would want to join, because it's going to be a heck of a lot easier for her to get products within her own country. If she's not interested in joining, is there anybody that she could maybe get to join that may make her second guest joining? Yeah, that's true. That's really good advice, actually. And I've but heard that Mexico like, isn't a mess anymore. Like things are good in Mexico now. Are they things clear? Are are getting, they things are getting much better. And with this new catalog, okay. they've got a lot more products coming their way. And okay. Mexico is booming, even with, I mean, you guys, it was pretty. They, they didn't have much left to sell here at the end of this catalog season and they're still booming. And so um, there's a huge opportunity there and they're getting more products and things are really picking up. But to answer that question, absolutely. You, you, you use her as your connector. And you know what? Another thing is, is that reverse psychology aspect of things is I know you're not interested, but if you know somebody that is X, Y, and Z is going on and I just don't want those that are interested to miss out. So I appreciate referrals, right? And they're like, wait, why are you saying I'm not interested? Even if they've never told you they're not interested before, right? If they've never like said, oh, I'd like to do this or whatever. I know you might not be interested in this, but if you know somebody that is, um, and then you can always come back to them and be like, hey, you know, this gal, da, 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 da. And you can kind of run that, that circle around. Well, and Melissa mentioned earlier that someone came to her to join way after the fact right and th that's happened I bet to all of us I mean I had a girl join me like six years after I asked her six million times I'd stopped asking her she was still watching social media and it wasn't me talking about the product or telling her the facts or the you know how much commission she was making. it was pictures of fun yeah. travel with my friends that convinced her to join um, she had some life stuff happen. She's no longer with us, but she really rocked her business for quite a long time. And so don't give up on people. And it doesn't necessarily, recruiting doesn't always come down to the conversation. Sometimes we've always told you guys, it's stories that sell and social media is a story. So make sure the story you're putting out on social media is attractive and not trashy. Yeah. So, and people, Regardless if you've offered the opportunity a million times, you continue to offer it because of those, I mean, you want to be consistent and you want those around you to know. I mean, I think Heather said this the other day and it's been like top of mind for me a million times. 
if somebody asks if I'm still in business with Sensi, then I am not doing a good enough job. And I'm thinking like, you know what? I just am going to treat every person, whether they're my best customer or a brand new customer, I'm going to treat them the exact same way so that the expectation of my level of service is the same across the board, no matter how long they have been with me. And obviously I'm here 13 years for a reason. And so, so long as I'm demonstrating to them consistency in my business, I'm not sticking around for nothing. And sometimes people have that wake up call that finally they're like, you know what? Melissa is onto something and I think I'll finally jump. So you be you consistently. And that's why if you are, um, you know, it, Even if you're having a minute of slumping in your business or you're not feeling it, or you're like, man, I don't know how to tackle all these things at once. And I'm trying to be a mom and a wife and a, and a 40 hour a week worker. And I'm trying to have a sensey business and I don't want to work on Saturdays because it's my family day. And I'm trying to do all these things, but what you don't want to do is ever make it look like you have too much on your plate and that Sensi doesn't fit. Not to your customers, not to your downline, not to you. You don't want, especially to your customers, because you, Sensi is supposed to be an addition to your life that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That adds enrichment. Enhances, it yeah. Enhances, mm-hmm. thank you. It enhances your life. Monetarily, personally, mentally, socially, it enhances your life. Those are the, those are the things that you want to share with people are the enhancements. And if you continue to share the enhancements consistently, people are attracted to that kind of energy. So even if they don't want to join, they're attracted to your energy to buy from you or to host from you. And so if you're not having Fun, that's the very first thing that you need to do with your business is make sure you're having fun because the rest falls into place. I'm off my soapbox. And I want to add that you guys, if you know somebody, reach out to your superstar director because there is not a single superstar director who wouldn't be thrilled to hop on a Zoom with you with your prospect because we know, you know, we have more experience and that's okay and, and we can help you. So if you have somebody, trust, like I said, ask your superstar director or your director, or if you have somebody in mind, ask one of your upline or one of your anybody who maybe understands more, maybe has as team members in other countries or just knows more in general, or you just love their passion, have them hop on with you because they would love to. Any final oh, Terry Newman I'm has inspired. her hand up. I see Terry down in my corner going, hey, you can, un- you want to say something, babe? You can unmute. Yeah. Why don't you just give us some fun, contagious words of Terry wisdom? Yeah, get it, girl. (laughs) Well, I was going to come on and say, I have a huge international team, except I'm lying. I'm just kidding. I don't. I have none. But I will say this, that um, I, as a superstar director 12 years in, I learned from my my superstar directors all the time. I love them so much. And I learned so much tonight. I did a seed kit with a guy that I danced with in college. He moved to the U.K., and he loved it so much, but um, his husband and, and he were not, they weren't in a position to do it. But what I learned tonight from you guys is I need to think about who I know where and reach out in a different way. Like, do you know anyone? To me, that was like the best advice. I mean, so simple, right? And we just don't do it. And I've got every contract, every, every contract agreement signed just in case <laughs> I've been paying for it forever. <laughs> and I'm like, It'd be great to use them. So I want to just thank everybody because that was, that was really good. And yeah, just everything the girl said, don't be afraid because you know, I always tell young people this, if you don't try or you don't, if you don't try, you know, the answer, right? If you do try, it could be a yes. So you have to just put yourself out there. And again, we just are, I, Melissa, I was laughing because I thought, I mean, 
is anybody in my life wondering like why I've stuck around for 12 years? Like right? <laughs> after a while, they have to be like, ah, oh, <laughs> there's okay. something to that. Right. <laughs> so, and, I appreciate actually, that. Terry, you just made me think of something too, that even if you don't personally sponsor somebody in another region, but maybe one of your frontline does mm -hmm. in order to get paid off of that downline, you have to have their country's agreement signed. Yes. That's a very big thing that not everybody mm -hmm. knows. Super good point. Yeah. Because I mean, if you're, if your team's growing rapidly, you guys, you, I, one of you said it, was it you, Callie, you were mad because you realized, oh my God, I just left money on the table because that wasn't signed. So for sure. Yeah. yeah so just making sure that that's. And one good. of the things I put I'm in the excited. chat too, those it's agreements, so yes, they cost you money. It's an investment in your business, but trust me, you want them signed because if you don't, like Kelly said, she left money on the table too, they are a write-off. So just like your PWS subscription, any other costs associated with your business, these agreement costs are no different. They are a tax write-off. Um, something I'll also add is if you go into your commission history, so, you know, because reporting performance have commission history, it will tell you your possible and it will tell you your final. And if there is a difference, it's normally because there was, an, there was not a cross-border agreement signed. So keep that in mind. Well, we're at the top of the hour. Yes, I am ready for bed. Anybody have, uh, of course I have something to share, so I'm gonna ask this question to end us. Anybody have any fun finds that they have gotten or purchased in the last, well, since the last time I asked, it's my favorite question to ask. And you know, I have one, of so of course, course I'm asking. Is. <laughs> but this, this is so silly, but it was so cheap and so exciting, but in the target dollar spot, there is this paper towel holder, except it'll sit flat on my desk and I'm putting all my sticker rolls on it. How do Gina, you see and something? For no other reason, Kimmy likes my, um, yeah, Kimmy likes yeah. My, answer, my, my show tonight. So I bought two of them and I'm going to sit them on my little thing back here. And my You sticker. only bought two? Only I did. Two. I only need two, Jamie. I'm trying to really be better. Okay. I, I probably people. bought four so that you could have sent two to me though. Let's keep that. Listen, Becker's clapping for me because she knows this is a really big deal. Jamie, you should be proud of me. I only bought two because that's all I have room for. So proud of you. But I'm so proud of you. Dollar that's spot. Amazing. Okay. Here you Here's go. my confession. I see an item for exactly what it is and that's it. I do not have the ability to see a paper towel holder. Is that what you said? Yeah. That's what that, that is the only purpose I would see it for. So I have to get inspired by people like you. And even my daughter gets, she's like, mom, how do you not see that? I'm like, it's, it's meant for Q-tips, Taylor. Q-tips go in it. That's all you use it for. There's no other use for it. I don't have the ability, a gift. It really is a gift to see something and, mm -hmm. use, and see it as a different purpose. Like, so you're I supposed to have a dollar it. spot. I'd be like, what, what do I need that for? Well, now I know I need that. You do. You need it for your sticker. <laughs> Well, I don't think business-wise, other than I got these in the dollar spot too. They look like Easter egg succulents, mm -hmm. but I'm putting them in my whiff box next month. And well, then I saw these. Like, I, I, really, I, I, got, I got a bunch of these because I love my tiered trays because I got a lot of those. And I got these what, little measures. Wait, what was it? It looked like a toilet. No, it's a little bunny rabbit. And it's even got it's them too. I don't it know does what it is. Look like it's going toilet. on my tiered tray. And then well, I Nothing but business related, but I love her idea so much better. And I, I think Polly wanted to say these. Melissa needs that little toilet for her dollhouse. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I saw, I saw who said measure the gap. All right, I got I need, you. I need the gap. Yep. That. Two and a two and a quarter. Thank you. Two and a quarter. You're welcome. I don't know if some share. of my rolls are gonna fit on there. Holly's trying to share with us. Okay, Holly. Okay, so I was going down the craft section at Dollar Tree, y'all. You're gonna like make the best trip. Okay, look, they're little pallets. They're little wooden pallets. And they're perfect for the fragrance flowers. Cute. And you can customize them. You can you can paint them, give them to your like I'm I'm wanting to go. I cleaned out our Dollar Tree <laughs> with them. 
Um, but you can put this with anybody who orders a fragrance yes. flower. It's a free gift. Mm -hmm. And they're just cute. You can, they can paint them or cut them or whatever, stain them. You know, that would yeah. be a really cute warmer stand idea for Father's Day. Oh, <gasps> yeah. Think? Cause it's like yeah. palette, like, mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, so, I get these. You, guys, you guys have probably all seen these, but I get these on Amazon and you I get like them. 25 of them for super inexpensive. So I give everybody who buys a fragrance flower, they get one of these to go under it as well. Those are so cute. I love those. Yeah, both. You have a Smith's Marketplace, which is Kroger, where they actually have more than just. It is not the same as Kroger's, Cal. You cannot even make that comparison. <laughs> okay well if you have like a Kroger brand that also has clothing and households and other things they have a little spot and they had these coasters two for a dollar and they're just like they look like, like the mats and I've got Those these for cute. fragrance flowers I always check out Kroger we had double scoops that I used for the Scentsy Soak and they were like 30 cents for both of them so it was super cheap and they were all on clearance. So I was like, you know, bought them, put them all in my cart. And then they also had passport holders that were like 90 cents and they had really cute like travel stuff. So I always check out that section in our Kroger because it's, there's always good stuff. And I feel like nobody looks at it. So it's always on clearance. I feel the need to share target. something. Fancy, I like those. Fancy always Target. finds the things. $3 each. They're two different heights. I don't know if I can get my camera. Becker, is that what we're on the hunt for? Yeah, I thought so. Those are cute. Yay. Melissa, now do you need them though, Melissa? No, I mean, I could Okay, find... Becker, quit encouraging bad habits. Hey, hey one I'm other trying thing. to fix things and she's undoing it every step of the way. Well, you know what? Becker, I also got... I got these little baby jars and these little baby wooden scoops and my gift with pur purchase coming up for March is going to be soak with this little scoop. That's Where'd you find them, Melissa? What's that? Where were those at? Amazon. They're, they should be on my Amazon business tool list, which yeah. is- Thank you, stickers. I don't know if I've ever seen that one here. <laughs> If you want my Amazon business list, it's togetherwesent.com slash Amazon. How do I make a business list? I just take all what I need. I put it in it's a, an album in my group page so that they know like what, what supplies or whatever I'm working with. But you know, do you know how to make no, it? No, I don't. I don't get paid off of you using my Amazon list. Just let okay, me but know. How do I make one? Oh, you just, you just, it's just add an option. It's just on the sidebar of Amazon. Like it says, add your, like each product as you order it the on the bottom 